In this tutorial, we will learn three important geometry nodes setup that can be very useful. We have created this model using this setup in geometry nodes. And as you can see, the origin point of this model is right here, which is slightly shifted toward left. This can create a lot of problems when we try to rotate the object or we scale it up. For example, if we rotate this model, it will rotate around its origin point. So you may want to move its origin to somewhere here so that it rotates around its geometrical center. Had it been a normal object added through traditional way, we could have easily set its origin to the center of its geometry. But it does not work for an object which is created through procedural nodes. So number one, we will learn how to move the origin point to the geometrical center for any object created through a procedural way. Actually, the origin point of this object did not really shift toward left. What is happening here is, we have created this model starting from the default cube. So wherever is the origin point for your base object, that same point will continue to be the origin point for your model created through nodes. Technically speaking, we cannot actually move the origin, but we can move the object itself so that the center of its geometry coincides with its origin point, it will have the same effect. And to do that, we need to identify the node which is giving us the required geometry. We can see that this mesh boolean is creating the geometry here, after all the other operations. And this is the node which is going to the output geometry. So we need to add a transform node, just after this geometry. Let us reuse this transform node by creating a duplicate copy, after the mesh boolean. We need some more space here, so let's move out these nodes. Now, we have to first connect this mesh boolean node to another node, called attribute statistics, which is right here. It's very useful in geometry nodes. We need to change its data type to vector. And we also need to connect this attribute input to a node called position node like this. It will bring the position details and we need to connect this mean position to this translation input so that it moves this way. But we have to first inverse this value so that the translation happens in the opposite direction. So let's add a vector math node and place it here. Then change this function type to scale or multiply and connect this mean value here. Then change the scale value to minus one. Finally, we need to connect its output to the translation input. As a result, we can see that the object has moved this way, so its geometric mean position has come over to its origin point. Now, if we try to rotate the object by any angle, it will rotate around its center of geometry, which is same as its origin. So our job is done perfectly. And even if we permanently apply this geometry node, we'll discover that the origin point remains at the center of its geometry. Number 2. We have now created a model like this, again with the help of some geometry nodes. And our node setup is right here. We have taken the default cube and added some spikes to it, so the origin is at the center of the cube. Now, if we change its size by scale up or scale down, we will see that as usual, the scaling is happening on both sides of the origin. But you may want to move this origin to the base of this object so that the scaling happens only on the positive z-axis with respect to its base like how we see a tree to grow only above the base plane. So this time, we are going to learn in geometry nodes how to move the origin point to any one end of the object that is to the center of the base in this case. Let us enlarge this editor for a better view. And like before, we need to identify the geometry node to be manipulated. We can see that this join geometry node is giving us the final output, so this is where we need to add a transform node. These steps will be mostly similar to the steps that we saw in the previous case. So we need to add one attribute statistics node like before. By default it deals with float, we'll change it to vector data type. And we have to connect this attribute input to position attribute. This time, instead of mean, we will connect this minimum output to our translation input, so that the origin point comes to the base of this object. But we need to first reverse this vector input with a vector scale node. You can also use the max value for the top end or the rightmost point. Let's connect this to the translation input. So we can see that the origin point of this object has now come down to the lower base, or the base has actually shifted to the origin. As a result, if we try to change the scale of this object, the scaling will happen only on the positive z-axis, with respect to its base. Number 3. We have created a model like a ferris wheel, and our geometry node setup is here. 
This is a symmetric object, and its origin is at the center of its geometry. So if we apply any transformation, say if we try to rotate this object, it will rotate around its center, which is its origin. But what if you want to rotate this wheel around a point somewhere here, but you do not want to move its origin for this operation. So we will learn how to temporarily move the pivot point for an object, without moving the origin point or the object itself. In that case, we cannot use this transform node. Instead, we have to use another node, which is called set position. Its geometry output should go to the final output. Then go to the add menu, and from the vector group, let's add a vector rotate node, and place it before the set position. Now, we need to connect this vector input to a position attribute node. And its vector output will go to the position input of the set position node. Since we want to rotate it around the Y axis, we need to change this rotation axis to Y axis. Now, we can rotate the wheel by changing this angle, and it will rotate around its center, but we can easily change this. We can see that there is a center point here, which is used as the pivot point of this rotation. We want to bring down the pivot point here. So let us change the Z location value to minus 5. These values are basically the three coordinates of the pivot point, and we know that this distance is 5 units. Now this will become the pivot point of this rotation. And if we try to rotate the wheel, this time it will rotate around the new pivot point. So this way, we can change the pivot point of rotation using a vector rotate node, along with set position, but the origin does not change in this case. It can be very helpful when you use geometry nodes for any modeling. That's all we wanted to cover today. We shared three quick tips here, which are quite easy, but I struggled to find them out. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.